tied to Jared Kushner, the son-in-law of President Donald Trump and a senior advisor to the president. CNN has confirmed that after the election last fall, Kushner explored this idea of setting up a secret line of communication with Russia to discuss military operations in Syria and other matters, even though it's unclear why a channel like that would be necessary. Now, Kushner first discussed this idea during a meeting in December with the Russian ambassador, Sergei Kislyak. Now, the line was never established, but it would have given Kushner and the incoming national security advisor, Michael Flynn, a secret channel of communication with Russian leaders that would have been outside the purview of the Obama administration. Now, this morning, during an off-camera but on-the-record briefing for reporters, the current national security advisor, H.R. McMaster, and the Trump chief economic advisor, Gary Cohn, were asked about this latest Kushner controversy, and this is how they responded. We're not going to comment on Jared. We're just not going to comment on him. General, generally speaking, General, would you be concerned if somebody on the National Security Council or in this administration were to seek a back-channel communication system with the Russian embassy and with the Kremlin? Would that generally concern you, not to even address Kushner specifically, but in general terms? No. I, I mean, we have back-channel communications with, in a number of, with a number of countries. So, uh, so generally speaking, about back-channel communications, what that allows you to do is to communicate in a discreet manner. So it doesn't predispose you toward any sort of content of that conversation or anything. So, no, I would not be concerned about it. And in just the last few minutes, uh, Jim Acosta, our senior White House correspondent, pressed White House officials about Jared Kushner. And there's uh, some reports out there that he may be taking a step back in the administration. And the White House uh, told uh, Jim that that's not the case, that Kushner's not going anywhere. He's going to continue to focus on his job. And Anna, this comes all as the president makes his way back to the United States. His team, both in and outside of the White House, are preparing for a full court, coordinated defense of the president and his administration. The president and sons, Donald Trump Jr. and Eric Trump and his wife, Laura, met with a group of White House and RNC officials multiple times over the past few days. The goal being to get everyone on the same page with an eye toward the 2018 midterms and, of course, the president's 2020 reelection campaign. We also know the president uh, rescheduled his rally, saying it will be another date down the road. I want to turn to Claire Sebastian now in Moscow. I'm curious what the reaction is to this latest Jared Kushner reporting and this, this reporting about uh, a secret line of communication that had been suggested by Jared Kushner. What's uh, Russia saying about all this? Well, Anna, it's interesting. We have no overt confirmation or denial about whether that story is true. What we do have, though, uh, is a comment from the Russian Foreign Ministry, the spokeswoman uh, responding to our request by text message earlier today, uh, calling the report by the Washington Post, quote, McCarthyism or simply internal political squabbles. McCarthyism uh, reflecting the sense here in Moscow that uh, the whole Russia issue is really being used by Trump's opponents to try to discredit him. Uh, and, and also, you know, that the sense of those political squabbles. Russia has consistently tried to paint any Russia-related controversy coming out of, of Washington as as, uh, as simply uh, political chaos going on there and nothing to do with them. But we are getting a sense that the level of, of exasperation is growing here. The same foreign ministry spokeswoman early in, the, early in the week warning the U.S. media not to spread lies about Russia's ambassador uh, to the U.S., Sergei Kislyak. Uh, so certainly a, a frustrating episode for the Russian government here uh, and another kind of blow to their hopes that, that this, uh, this relationship could be on a path to improvement, Anna. I understand that Russia is denying this report, but if it is true, could it also be, or what are the chances that Russia, this, this communication that was intercepted between Kislyak and Moscow, according to the Washington Post reporting, that that was actually Russia just trying to throw off U.S. officials? Well, you know, it's not outside the realm of possibility, certainly. It's, a, it's an accepted wisdom in Western intelligence agencies that Russia is a, is a master at using disinformation when it comes to advancing its political goals. And this might have been a way to, uh, to uh, you know, test whether or not this line was secure. But this doesn't seem to have been something that would have advanced their political goals. This was a time when, when the hopes for that relationship with the U.S. were particularly high. There was definitely a sense of euphoria uh, in Moscow at that point, just a month after the election. And, uh, Claire Sebastian in Moscow, Ryan Nobles, our thanks to both of you. I want to bring in my panel, CNN Global Affairs Analyst and Senior National Security Correspondent for the Daily Beast, Kimberly Dozier.